Hi guys, it's Cassie. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a seasoned subscriber. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the best and worst investment bags of 2020. Guys, if you're new here, my name is Cassie. I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Fridays, sometimes Mondays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're probably gonna love it here on this channel, so head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, all of that business, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going? To rehab? Never. Guys, are you ready? Let's go. This is just my opinion through my gallivantations through the world of luxury, okay? And we're gonna start off with the worst. Whether or not something is, is an investment piece largely depends upon if there are price increases and general supply and demand. Finally putting that economics degree of mine into use. There are certain brands that just don't hold their value. Their bags just don't hold their value. And just to give you a taster of some of them, Gucci is one of those. I personally am a fan of Gucci and all of that, but if you're looking for an investment bag, this is not the brand for you. Even if you look at something like the Marmont, which a lot of people are buying, a lot of people think it's a classic, Listen, it hasn't been around a long, long enough for us to even know, and second of all, it just doesn't hold its value. There are no price increases, so if you bought it last year, you're gonna sell it for less on the pre-loved market. Another brand that also doesn't retain its value is Saint Laurent, previously known as YSL, Yves Saint Laurent. Da, da, da. So, they just also don't necessarily hold their value. The third brand that I wanted to highlight that doesn't really hold its value is Valentino. And you will know this because Valentino bags generally tend to find their way into the sale. And that's how you know. If a bag goes on sale, it's not an investment piece, okay? Because the investment pieces we're gonna be talking about later on in the video do not go into the sale. Now, the last kind of bag that I thought to mention that doesn't really hold its value are seasonal pieces. And I love me a good seasonal piece. For example, if we take something like this, this is one of my favorite bags of all time. If you've been on this channel long enough, you know she's an icon. This was from the 2019 Cruise Collection and she is an extremely seasonal piece, okay? Although she's in caviar leather, although the style, I guess, can be seen to be quite classic, it's a flap style, all of that, it is a seasonal piece, okay? It came and went, it's in a very seasonal colour, you know, it's not one of those classic blacks, beiges, possibly a red could be thrown in there kind of thing. You get the gist. She's a seasonal piece, she doesn't retain her value. Another example of this is the Fendi baguette I bought from the Aroma Amour collection. Um, look, she's got the neon piping, which is exactly why I picked her, because you, I love me, just a, just a, just a, just a pop of neon, you know? And the thing with this bag is, this is not going to retain its value as much as its leather cousins. Now let's talk about the best investment pieces. Before we talk about that though, I need to tell you about the holy trinity of luxury bag brands, okay? There are three bag brands that generally, the classics within these brands, retain or, ding, 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 increase in value. So those brands are Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and the queen of all luxury handbags, Hermes. So this brings to me to my first category of best investment bags, and those are the usual suspects, okay? Here we have the Chanel Classic Flap. You have the Chanel wallet on chain. I actually found the receipt for this recently and I think something around £1,500 was paid for this. I'm going to put the most recent price up here just so that you can see purely from price increases how much these things go up in value because then when you go to sell it, the price has gone up, you're at least probably going to get what you paid for it back. Other usual suspects include your Louis Vuitton classics, your Neverfulls, your Speedies. Then we go to the Holy Grail. You've got your Birkins and your Kellys. As soon as you walk outside of the store with these bags, you have made money. And this is purely due to the demand and supply around the Birkins or the Kellys. You can't just walk in and ask for them, okay? You've got to put in the legwork, you've got to have a relationship, blah, blah. I've got a whole video on this, I'll link it above. But 
There is, you can't just go and, and buy it. There are so many resellers that specialize in Birkins and Kellys, but you pay a very hefty premium for them just because of how much people want these bags. It is the best investment purchase luxury bag wise that you can ever make. I even read an article that Birkins hold more value than gold. Okay, another brand that I wanted to talk about with regards to like investment pieces is actually Dior. Now Dior previously, like they're not a part of the Holy Trinity, okay? But recently they Dior has been upping their prices, okay? If we take something like the Dior saddlebag, which we know like this was a design from like years ago, they brought it back out. It is now a classic and a staple and part of their usual collection. They do them in all different colors and textures and all of that under the sun. But again, even since I bought this bag, the price has gone up. That is also a brand that quite interestingly has, has you know, moved themselves into investment piece category. The next category is arguably my favorite. This is hyped up, super trendy pieces. So I have a wonderful example for you here. And that is the Louis Vuitton Multi Pochette Accessoire. Look, she's looking a little skinny at the moment. Okay, she's looking a little frail. That's because she hasn't got anything inside her. Don't judge her, she usually looks a lot more healthy than this. Okay, but anyway, this was so disgustingly popular that you can't get it now. It is an Olympic sport to get this bag. Because of that, these bags are now selling for double, triple times the price on pre-loved sites. Like in a year's time, is this gonna be an investment piece? I don't know, I don't know, we don't know for this, but for the amount of time that it's hyped and it's super hard to get and all of that, it definitely is. Okay, so the final category of best investment bags are the new classics. So these are pieces that have been announced to be part of the permanent collections of the Holy Trinity, okay? So for example, the Chanel 19 bag, this was released towards the end of last year and it was basically announced that this is going to be one of the new Chanel classics, okay? This is going to be a part of their permanent roster. This style will always be there, and like the classic flap, like the boy bag and all of that will always be there. So this now means it's gonna be a part of the price increases. So already by buying pieces like this early, it becomes an investment piece because it's just gonna go up in price increases throughout the years and all of that, such that if you want to sell it in X amount of years time, you're at least gonna get your money back from it because the price has gone up. Let me know if you think there are more categories or more brands that hold their value or don't hold their value as much. Let me know in the comments. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm personally not someone that buys their bags for investment value, but I do think it's interesting to know and keep on top of and all of that. Guys, I'm going to link to another video here in case you haven't already seen it. And you're like, oh, I could do with some more Cassie two dollar sign time, you know. Guys, have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.